What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are outfitting two Amazon oil catch cans. <laughs> What's going on? If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to take the time now to go ahead and give this video a big like. It's not going to waste any of your time. It takes a fraction of a second to do so. And while you're doing it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure to hit the bell notification so you get notified anytime new episodes get loaded up here to GSSG. So I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, Jordan, you've already done a video on oil catch cans. Uh, why are you doing another one? Well, the reason for that is because now we have this thing. We have a supercharger on here, and it's even more important to make sure that we are watching our oil consumption and our blow-by and anything that happens. So what we're going to be doing is fitting two of these to this. Now, if you're like me and you shop around, you've been noticing that you can find single ones and there's possibly a chance you stumble across the UPR dual catch can that is set up specifically for the Rouse Superchargers. Well, I started looking at that, reading all about it, and it seems like it makes a lot of sense. It seems like it's a good idea. My only problem with it is it's $400 and I'm kind of cheap. So what I did was I looked at the stats for this thing. It's two oil catch cans coming in at about eight ounces each that they sent you. So I hopped on Amazon and grabbed these two here that are both five ounces each. Now in total, of course, I have six ounces shorter than what you would have there. But when we look at the construction of these things, they actually seem like they're pretty good. So we have a drain plug down here at the bottom. This actually screws off in case you want to dump it through there. You have your in and your out. And it seems like it's a nice, solid construction. When we open it up, we can see that it has baffling. It has our brass filter right here. Very similar to what there is on the UPR. Now, what I will say is this didn't come with any lines. I thought it was going to come with lines, but we can easily go to AutoZone, pick up those parts to do what we need to do. And these two combined cost me $40. So 10 times less at this point than what it would have cost me to get the UPR units. What we need to do now is figure out where we're going to mount these things. Now, looking at the install instructions and everything that they have on the UPR ones, one mounts generally over here in this direction, and another one is going to mount right over here next to the strut tower. Now, is that where I'm gonna put them? I don't know exactly, but I wanna try and keep them in this general vicinity because my guess is they've done the research and they got it pretty darn close. So I have my template here. Uh, it's gonna come up, do a little bit of a hook bend there, come in and mount underneath the air box. If you look down here, I'll move this out of the way. There's a little bit of a dip in there. That's where we're gonna mount the bottom section. Went to Lowe's, grabbed a piece of this, what is this? 24 gauge steel, 16 gauge steel. We're gonna cut that up and that's gonna be what we use for our bracket break. shaped with our hole down here at the bottom we have two small holes here because i'm going to be putting two riv nuts in place to be able to hold the cap here onto there and then up top is our hole that'll go underneath the air box and the stock bolt will go through down here we're going to put a backing on uh, the inside of the wheel well basically a, a large washer with a, a riv nut through it and then it'll bolt in here. Once that's all done, we'll go ahead and spray it, let it sit for a little bit. I got my brackets that I created over here. I sprayed them down with a zinc-based primer. We're gonna sit here and let those things dry for a little bit, and then we're going to spray them black. So I have one rib nut right there, the other one right here. This bracket is basically gonna go in through here like this, and then have a little nub that drops off the back, which is where the catch can will mount and then it'll be right down here in this space hoses coming out through here here is our bracket for the driver's side so we got our rib nuts in there here is the backing plate for where it's going to bolt in from the back side where basically this is going to sit in the wheel well on the back side of this gets bolted in through there 
And then this is where we are going to sit our oil catch can. And then here we are with the catch can installed onto it. It's not tightened down fully yet. You can see it's wobbling around a little bit. That's because I wanna make sure that I get the angle correct once we get in the vehicle and start running the lines. And here's the mount for the second can. So we're using stock hardware from one of the previous vehicles. And sit in right there, separate, go around that nozzle and back up to where it needs to be. The other thing I kind of like about this setup is once the radiator shield is in place, you won't be able to see the majority of this bracket. Now it does fill the spot of one of the push pins that goes here. So hopefully that doesn't create an issue. I can just remove that and run the bolt straight through there if need be, which I may end up doing anyway. But then you only got that little bit right there that you barely even notice. And then as for the oil catch can over here, uh, you can't even see it. It's tucked up in there. Right about now. All right, it's late again, and I'm finishing everything up here. The car's a little wet because the garage door was open and it was raining, so excuse that. Here's our bracket. Here's oil catch can number one. You go up in here using the factory clips. And then number two is over here, going up and through here still using factory clips and everything's in place. All said and done, I think with the two $40 catch cans, the hoses that I have here, uh, I spent probably about, I don't know, 60 bucks, plus maybe an additional $10 here on the hose clamps. So what, what are we looking at here? 70 bucks in total to do what was going to be $400 had I bought it from someone. Now, uh, we'll have to see if it works, but right now it seems pretty simple. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoyed this at all, go ahead and give it a big fat thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well, because that also lets me know that, hey, you know what? This should be your last video. So go ahead and do that. And then if I was you and I really, really didn't like it, I'd go ahead and I'd subscribe. And then I'd also hit those bell notifications. That way, every time I post a video that you hate, you can comment on it and let me know that you hate it. Now, this video was a do-it-yourself how-to on trying to get an oil catch can into your vehicle a little bit cheaper. Maybe it's not for everybody. We will end up having the engine covers in here later, which will cover everything up and it'll look a little bit nicer. But coming up in the next video, we are gonna be tackling some stuff known as heat soak and making sure that our engine stays cool. I'm not gonna say that we got anything in the house right now, but maybe we do. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.